Behind me here, I've got uh, my celebrity tomatoes over here. This tunnel over here is filled with big beef tomatoes. The tunnel directly behind me right here is filled with Cherokee purples. I got another greenhouse over here filled with cherry tomatoes. And then I got field cherry tomatoes and I got a few different types of field tomatoes growing. And they're all pretty much big beefsteak tomatoes similar to this one other than the cherry tomatoes and the Cherokee purples. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Chef Mikey. Welcome back to Chef's Harvest Farm. I'm a former executive chef who turned my garden and hobby into a full-time business. I wanted to talk about when you should be harvesting your tomatoes and why. So this tomato is too ripe for me to be harvesting. And the reason why is if I leave this on the plant till it gets red right like this, if it gets just a little bit too much water, it's gonna start cracking. So that's when you get the cracks in your tomatoes, then they get bugs and they're no longer desirable or marketable really. And then the other reason I don't wanna harvest it like this is handling. I don't want my staff, my workers, trying to pull these off the plants like this. Cause if it's hard and you squeeze it, then you're gonna bruise it. And then it's not marketable. I also don't want these in the box on top of each other like this. I don't wanna harvest them like this. Then you put them into a tote, take them in our storage room all stacked on top of each other when they're ripe when they're like this you could just like fill a box full of tomatoes like this and then transport them into where we're going to store them put them in boxes and let them ripen like this so the main reason i don't want to harvest them like this is because i don't want to damage them and if they go like an extra day or two after this if they look like this and you don't get them that day then this thing's going to get cracked as soon as you give it any water that's another thing is consistent watering with tomatoes i grow them in the tunnels here uh, and they stay on drip they get 45 minutes of drip irrigation every day if i give them any more water than that then these tomatoes are going to crack and they're no longer going to be marketable so i harvest my tomatoes like this as soon as you see them start to turn red that's when i harvest them and we put them directly into the boxes that we're going to sell them in and we put them into climate controlled storage so i'm going to show you my climate controlled storage here in a second this is why i call blush so you want to pick your tomatoes as soon as they start blushing bring them into the house and this tomato is going to be ripe within in three to five days probably and the best temperature you can store tomatoes at is 50 degrees fahrenheit you don't want to refrigerate them because they lose some of their flavor and then the texture of the tomato kind of changes and it's not as desirable so for that reason i want to store my tomatoes as close to 50 degrees as possible and then if you leave them at like 70 degrees or 80 degrees, you know, the warmer it is and the faster they're gonna ripen. So I like to kind of control that with climate controlled storage. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. Let's go inside. I'll show you how we're storing our tomatoes. Now that it's the middle of summer, I'm not growing plants indoors at all. I'm growing all my plants outdoors. So after we harvested garlic, I loaded this thing up with all the garlic and that's how we cured our garlic. So I put a dehumidifier in there with the exhaust going through an air filter and then the air filter makes it so that my house didn't smell like garlic and, and then it's pulling fresh air in that's how, and then I put a fan in there and that's how we cured and dried our garlic. And then we got the garlic pulled out. So once we got all the garlic out, I cured my onions in here. I cured some of them. We had a shit ton of onions. So I cured some of them in the greenhouse and then some of them got cured in here. And then the onions come out. And now we've turned this into cold storage for our tomatoes. So I put a portable AC unit in here that keeps the temperature 60 degrees inside the tent, which is a pretty good temperature to be storing tomatoes. You want to store your tomatoes at about 50 degrees ideally um but i can only get down to 60 so it's better than the 75 degrees that it is in the basement at room temperature so doing the best i can with what i have like i didn't buy this for this purpose i'm just working with what i have so i didn't have to buy a separate refrigerator or cold room or whatever the ac unit is something that we already had right so i just kind of looked at things i had on hand how can i make myself a little cold storage room and this is what i came up with so i'll show you how it works Okay, so you can kind of see it's all filled with tomatoes right now. Um, I'll take a lot of them to the market tomorrow, and then the rest of them will stay in here. I've already got about 100 pounds sold for restaurant sales on Tuesday. So we're harvesting them when they're not quite ripe, and then we're letting them ripen up in here. So you always want to keep the ripest ones on the bottom whenever possible. And then that way, when they off gas, the gases that they let off will help ripen the ones above them. So the way you'd want to store these is if you wanted your green tomatoes to ripen a little bit faster, you want to put those on the top because the ones, the riper ones underneath them are going to off gas 
and they're going to help the ones above them ripen a little bit more because the gas is going to go up. So if you wanted the ones, the green ones to stay green a little bit longer and the ripe ones to ripen a little bit more, you put the riper ones on the top and the bottom ones will off gas and help the ripe ones get really ripe if you need them ripe like within a day or two days. But then if you wanted to wait three, four or five days for them to get ripe, then vice versa. You understand? Uh, so I'll show you what we got going on in here and then I hope this uh, information was useful for you and I'll see y'all in the next one.